I don't think I've ever seen you so excited about something. Uh, Lucy, you need to tell everyone what is on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that sound so wrong? Are we trying pink tit? Picting a ray of emotions flowing through me at the moment. Are you okay? Welcome back to another episode. Look, I am giddy about this one. This is not our boat, this is hull three. Now, obviously, when they were filming the infusion of our boat, we were in Australia. However, we promised you that we'd bring you the infusion in depth. And so today, this whole jiggery pokery, the whole Meccano set, the whole Mario Plumber pipe work is in place and they are gonna start the infusion in one hour. So stay tuned, we are gonna be showing you how they build the boats, stage one. So while we're waiting for the infusion to take place, I just want to run through what they're doing next door, which is about the infusion of the headliners. Now, yes, Theresa's already pointed out I'm covered in sweat patches, and they're quite bad, but it's bloody hot in here. They start with the drawings there. So there's a series of drawings about the headliners. That's point one. Point two, build a frame, MDF frame down there. You then move to the next stage which is building everything in MDF. So now you've got a framework that can only be made effectively once you've got the deck mold, because this has got to be like absolute precision. So why not just build it once you've got a mold? You can use the mold of your deck as a template. You can see this skeleton outside like the framework. It's then built up in MDF, which is all cut to size. And then these, all the gaps are filled and fed. Moving over to this side, you can then see the next stage. So this is now complete, filled and fed. And these will be the plugs that they use to build the headliners for all the subsequent holes. So again, you've got something which is perfectly formed, fits perfectly. There's a steel substructure. There's no distortion in this at all. So using this to make the headliners means that you are gonna get like absolute cookie cutter perfect headliners every time you take a mold. So from this, they'll take molds, then they'll build headliners from that. Just to get you in perspective, this is the main section of the hull. You can see the longer on there and the two inboard hulls. Left and right, you have the two outboard hulls and they are gonna be infused and then this will all be bonded together. Now that they're onto hole three, as they did with hole two, they are making this in pieces and putting it back together. Now let's move on to see how they bag and then let's watch this infusion. So the first stage of infusion, you need to make a vacuum and this is the vacuum bagging. The entire side hull here is bagged and you need to get this completely airtight, which basically means you've got these seams that are applied across there. The whole bag is then vacuum tight. And then if you look, those, those little spigots there, those little spigots, the little flanges are where the tubing will go. Obviously they plan this so that they've got these little, the, the, the T-joints for the addition of the tubing all around the hull. Pressure millibar. Standard pressure of 1018. So basically what they're trying to do, that, that's how they're measuring the pressure. And come on. So constituent parts, what do we need? We need to start with a vacuum pump to do vacuum infusion. Over there, huge vacuum pump. When that's turned on, that is going to really suck all the air out of the tubes, followed by the pipe work drawing the resin through and coating all that glass, all that foam core, and that is this infusion process, how that's gonna start off. But obviously it's far more complicated, as you can see from this huge, huge network of pipe work that's behind me. So let's just talk about all these components. Just follow me through this, it's pretty cool. Now let's start with this. This is essentially a manifold. Manifold to anyone in engineering is a series of different valves that can be turned on where you have one pipe going into multiple pipes. These are the buckets where the resin is gonna be put. Obviously, this has to go through in a, con in a controlled manner. The resin is gonna flow from the top downwards. And it's done in a way where, as you can see, all these pipes are labeled. They've all got valves, on off stop valves, and they all go to different parts. Now, these are then controlled and open and closed at different times if you need to get resin to another part of the boat or you need to slow down the resin from a certain part of the hull, then you just change those valves. They also have a gauge to check the vacuum, so the integrity of the vacuum, 
So I don't know what they'll get up to. There's no such thing as a complete vacuum. So no, no one told me there's going to be a hundred percent vacuum in this. No such thing. I don't think I've ever seen you so excited about something. Uh, then the third drum, which is this, is where all the excess resin goes to. So for a complete infusion, you need to make sure that you've got resin coming back into here. Finally, you've got the la this last pipe, which will be above the level of the resin, so that you don't end up sucking excess resin back into the vacuum, which will cause a few hiccups. The workers are just finishing off doing some, uh, doing some preparation to the other side of the hull, and then they'll watch this infusion process. Super, super excited about this one. So it has been a frenetic few minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Obviously, I've worked with fiberglass before, and I've done work with gel coat before, but essentially what you've got is you've got, in this case, fine Lester, but it has to be activated. Prior to this, we saw the guys doing a test activation on smaller samples to get the ratio of activator and catalyst to resin right. They were working between 1.3 and 1.4%. But then once they've actually put that into the big buckets, they then have a working time. Like for us, we used to always try and work with a 60 minute work time, but I talked to Danny afterwards and find out what they believe the work time is. Danny said that they believe the whole infusion is going to take about 45 minutes. So literally, once that's gone in, once they've activated it, you are on a ticking clock. You've got 45 minutes to get everything done or you have got a problem. So literally, it's all hands on deck. We are trying very, very hard to stay out of the way. Therese is actually up there. We've got a time-lapse camera up there. But like, honestly, this is so cool. I said this to the patrons the other day. Even if we didn't have a camera, I'd be super, super, super pumped to be seeing this stuff. It is amazing. And so with Danny acting like a conductor of an orchestra, he signals the staff to open the valves in a specific order. And then we get to start to see the resin flowing through this amazing hull. What you're gonna be seeing over the next 40 minutes is Danny, who is the guy there. They're kind of like, the, you've seen him in previous videos. Head honcho, kind of supervising all this, walking the deck, looking to see, looking to make sure that the infusion is going exactly in the order that he wants to. Then he's got his team of guys on the ground there. Now what they have got, they've got a series of numbered valves. He knows which valves correspond to which areas of the boat. So then he says, I need more uh, resin. I need more vinyl ester here. It's literally walking and watching this whole sequence occurring so that you can see from the top down, because obviously why not use gravity to assist you? Everything is flowing down and you're gonna be able to see behind me. It all started here. Now, as I look, they've probably got about a foot. You can see the infused areas are brown. And as I talk, you'll be able to see this all kind of dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. So we have got a huge amount to see. Just follow me around here. You can see, maybe, hopefully, where these grid patterns are in the, in the foam core, where there are the cuts for the resin to be drawn through. You can see it's slightly darker because there's obviously a greater body of resin there. And this will come through and it will pass through. And obviously, there's other guys checking to make sure that there's no leaks. They also will be looking at the pressure gauge. We talked to the guy before about what pressure they are trying to maintain. I will go back and see what, what negative pressure that they have running there. I don't want to get away in, uh, in the way of any of the resin uh, kind of guys because firstly, there is, um, I, don't, I do not want to affect their timing. That's going back in. They're continually filling the bucket. You've got Danny checking to make sure it's all going through. And as we progress through this, and I kind of, like, how is it that I could be so bloody excited about resin? As you can see, we started off with like no, no colored tubes. All the tubes are bright white because they're semi, semi translucent. And now you can see, we've probably got about 30 to 40% of these tubes now with resin flowing through them. But this is like watching the birth of a boat. It is, you know, hand lamination, schman lamination. That's kind of very like old school. This, the new way to do things. Welcome to Nightlife in Vietnam. We're on the 24th floor and it is pretty awesome, but tonight we want to show you both sides of Vietnamese nightlife. This rooftop bar has some amazing drinks and Teresa's drinking a dragon fruit cocktail. So this is probably the one end of the spectrum for Vietnamese nightlife. The other end of the spectrum is going to be the street food market that we're going to take you to show you where we're just going to go and eat crabs. <laughs> Why does that sound so wrong? Tell 
on what is on the menu. <laughs> Are we trying pick tit? Conflicting array of emotions <laughs> flowing through me at the moment. That's serious. This pick tit. Pick tit. Pick meat or tit. Like. <laughs> How do you eat the snails, Nick? You suck them because of their shells. <laughs> so apparently, and I don't recall this, when we first arrived in Vietnam, I said to Lucy, I'll eat anything but the wilder the better. But tonight. She's putting that to the test. Chicken joint. Hey, listen. <laughs> chicken joint is exactly what you think it would be. It's just the joints that you normally hang on, hang on. Wouldn't eat. But pig tit aside, the rest of the meal was fantastic and there were some dishes which we now eat commonly, snails in butter, there are some clams, some scallops with peanuts, some large chilli snails which are absolutely divine and then a variety of other dishes from prawns to noodles with vegetables, all absolutely amazing. So Lucy has said eat it first and I'll tell you what it is. And what are we eating that right there? I don't know what it is. Yeah. It doesn't have much flavour, but it, it, I think it's offal. And the size of it is small, so it's chicken offal. Chicken, it's not liver. Chicken lung. No, not a duck. Part of a duck? Not a duck. Pig? Yeah. Pig tip. Yes. <laughs> Everyone wants to know how it tastes. Are you okay? That was a hard swallow. <laughs> that was a hard swallow. Ah, here we go. Something more familiar. How is it you're escaping this? Because I'm the I'm the camera woman. Yeah, big tit is a hard so Lucy, so far, Nick has not liked your pig tits or your chicken knuckle. He didn't know, and then he would react So that was dinner in Vietnam. Yes. Things that I don't think I'd ever normally would eat. Pig tit, not not a highlight. <laughs> chicken chicken knuckle, also not a highlight. Also not a highlight. Not something we're ever going to see at a restaurant that we would normally use. Between posh bar and kind of street food, both very different. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. This is us, this is us living in Vietnam. It is all pretty epic. We are now off home because we've got to film tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning we need to be in the factory at eight o'clock. It's now 11 o'clock. We've got about half an hour to get home. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be back with more life in Vietnam and boat building. See you again really soon. Goodbye.